His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the occasion of His Highness' return from France after attending the Paris Olympics, where the kingdom achieved a historic global accomplishment by winning two gold, one silver and one bronze medals in various games. His Majesty thanked His Highness Sheikh Khaled for his distinguished work in serving Bahraini sport and launching initiatives that support the youth and sports sector in the kingdom. He also praised His Highness' achievements in various sports and his continued efforts to enhance Bahrain's status in sporting events. He praised Bahrain's unprecedented historic achievements in the Paris Olympics, which adds to its series of honourable sporting achievements, which consolidated Bahrain's status on the world sports map. He praised the efforts and support of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Khalid's efforts, which motivated Bahraini athletes to make these achievements in the Olympics and ascend podium. His Majesty thanked and congratulated the athletes who raised the status of Bahrain and hailed their distinguished performances and high spirits in the competitions. He also hailed the efforts of GSA and BOC and all who contributed to achieving these honourable results. He then praised uh, the continuous development of Bahraini sports and the qualitative achievements made by the determination of the people of Bahrain, which are a source of pride. His Majesty affirmed the keenness to continue providing support for the Bahraini youth to continue their march of success in all youth and sporting events. He wished their Highnesses Sheikh Nasser and Sheikh Khaled and all Bahraini youth further success in upcoming participation for more achievements and serve the kingdom. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at a ceremony at Sakhir Palace the credentials of 40 new ambassadors to Bahrain. The ceremony was attended by His Highness the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, and his children, the Minister of the Royal Court, the Minister of the Foreign Affairs, the Chief of a Royal Protocol, and the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs. The ambassadors had arrived at Sakhir Palace and were received by the Chief of the Royal Protocol.
سفير جمهورية اتحاد بينمار سفير سنغافورة سفير جمهورية أنغولا سفير مملكة بلجيكا سفير البوسنة والهرسك سفير الجمهورية الهيلينية سفير الاتحاد السويسري سفير جمهورية الإكوادور سفير جمهورية رواندا سفير مملكة بوتان سفير جمهورية بنين سفير جمهورية أرمينيا سفير جمهورية فنلندا His Majesty the King then delivered the following speech. الرحيم أصحاب السعادة نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب كسفراء معتمدين لدى مملكة البحرين التي تعتز بعلاقاتها المتميزة مع دولكم الموقرة ونتمنى لكم لهذه المناسبة فترة عمل مثمرة مليئة بالإنجاز حيث سنحرص خلالها على تقديم كافة أوجه الدعم والمساندة لتحقيق ما نرجوه معا من تقارب 
وتعاون مشترك كما أوصيكم جميعا بنقل تحيات الشخصية إلى أصحاب الجلالة والفخامة الذين نكن لهم كل تقدير ومودة ومحبة وختاما نتمنى لكم المزيد من التوفيق في مهامكم ودوام الصحة والعافية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته For their part, the ambassadors conveyed to His Majesty the greetings and appreciation of their country's leaders and their wishes of good health and happiness to His Majesty and further progress and prosperity to Bahrain and its people. They expressed pride in the ties between their countries and Bahrain at all levels. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 66 of this year, appointing general directors at the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Baka, based on a proposal by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and following the approval of the Cabinet. The following shall be appointed in Baka with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary. 
Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Director General of Heritage, Farah Mohammed Khaled Youssef Matar, Director General of Culture and Museums, and Dr. Salman Ahmed Ibrahim Al Mahari, Director General of Antiquities. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 41 for this year appointing directors at the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities based on a proposal from BAKA's president. The following shall be appointed at BAKA. Hani Ali Jamal Bahzad, Director of Communication and Partnerships. Mustafa Salman Abdul Mohsen El Suleiman, Director of Cultural Properties and Projects. Dana Youssef Abdul Mohsen Abul Ghani, Director of National Heritage. Huda Sayyid Abdul Ghaffar Mohammed Al Alawi, Director of Culture. And Haya Ahmed Al Sayyid Ibrahim Al Sabah Al Sada, Director of Museums. Assigned by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, his special representative, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, conveyed the condolences of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mash'al Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, the Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Khaled Al Hamad Al Mubarak Al Sabah, His Highness Sheikh Nasser Al Mohammed Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Mubarak Al Sabah, and Kuwait's Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed Abdullah. Al Ahmed Al Sabah, as well as to senior members of the Al Sabah family, and the pa on the passing of the late chief of the Kuwaiti National Guard, His Highness Sheikh Salem Al Ali Al Salem Al Mubarak Al Sabah. His Highness was accompanied by the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Director General of the Royal Family Council, Sheikh Salman bin Khalid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and Bahrain's ambassador to Kuwait, Salah Ali Al Malki. Upon arrival, His Highness was received by the Minister of State for Emiri Diwan Affairs, Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah Al Mubarak Al Sabah.
The president of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, engineer Bassem Al Hamar, emphasized the continuous keenness to employ modern technologies in the real estate sector, including AI. Let's have a listen. Government institutions in Bahrain continue their efforts to adopt artificial intelligence technologies in their work and development plans. Recently, the Survey and Land Registration Bureau announced the launch of the artificial intelligence system to detect changes and violations in building, in cooperation with Labs Planet to provide satellite images and Atoski to provide AI reports, in coordination with the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture. This system affirms the Bureau's continuous keenness to employ modern technologies in the real estate sector within the framework of implementing the directives of His Majesty the King, which call for developing a comprehensive national plan that ensures full readiness for the requirements of the digital economy and the adoption of artificial intelligence technologies in the production and service sectors for the benefit of the national economy. The launch of the system is also in line with government performance and digital transformation, which is part of the government program 2023 to 2026. This system relies on artificial intelligence applications to compare high-resolution satellite images to monitor changes caused by natural or human factors quickly and accurately, which saves time and effort, promotes compliance with laws and regulations, maintains the civilized appearance of cities, and contributes to Bahrain achieving sustainability as part of the Sustainable Development Goals. And now for more details, we're joined over the phone by the Director General of the Surveying at the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, Engineer Neji Sept Salem. Hello and welcome, Mr. Neji. Can you tell us how the launch of this system enhances the ability to monitor and immediately observe structural and natural changes? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Bahrain TV for hosting me and giving us the opportunity to talk about the system launch today. I am so pleased to inform the audience that technology now plays a vital role in Vision 2030. Actually, the Kingdom of Bahrain has not only planned for the future, but it, has, it is actually living in the future now. And this coming through investing in advanced technology and developing national the human factors. The project announced today is the greatest proof of that. Moreover, uh, this project aligns with the directive of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Prime Minister, and aligned with the government's program. And regarding your question, uh, the system monitors changes in the structure, man-made and natural changes in the kingdom. And this is done by uh, utilizing artificial intelligence to compare two satellite images taken at a specific time, and this time is around uh, two weeks. And this changes, including all the uh, different changes and classification. And of course, this will increase the efficiency of monitoring and immediately observing the urban and natural uh, changes. Okay, so what is the positive impact of the system on sustainable development efforts in Bahrain? Uh, actually, uh, this system supports the sustainable development itself in many ways and benefits both public and private sector. And I can give here some examples uh, of this benefit. Uh, this system can uh, monitor uh, the urban development, also can monitor a project, uh, the process of the construction project, also can uh, monitor the environmental okay, issue and to protect the environment through monitoring of all types of changes. Also can uh, do the monitoring of agricultural changes. And in the end, it will uh, lead to uh, a smart way of managing the cities. And we can uh, conclude that by saying that this is the way of uh, managing the smart city. And by this uh, system, the government and the all you know entities can receive up-to-date data and images. So such advanced technology plays a significant role in increasing the efficiency of the system and detecting changes and improving the human factors efficiency. <coughs> and this will enhance the operation and government, of course. Also, it will strengthen the role of the technology in the planning and implementation. And this will give us a very 
a qualitative, reliable, and effective way to manage the thing. Thank you. Director General of Surveying at the Survey and Land Registration Bureau Engineer Neji Sevd Salam, thank you for your time. Now, the Bahrain Society of Engineers organized a seminar at the Jouffer headquarters on the AI-based system for detecting urban changes. The seminar featured a group of specialists from the Survey and Land Registration Bureau and the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture. It was also attended by real estate sector officials, professional associations and representatives from relevant public and private institutions. The president of the Bahrain Society of Engineers emphasized the importance of the participation of its members and other relevant institutions and associations in the seminar aiming to enhance cooperation and coordination between them. The General Directorate of Survey at the SLRB highlighted the significance of the engineering sector in Bahrain and the active role of the Bahrain Society of Engineers in advancing the country's urban development. Director General of Institute of Public Administration, Dr. Shikha Rana Bent Isa Ben Daijal Khalifa, noted that the national cadres affiliated with the Institute work on designing all programs and initiatives in line with the Institute's strategy aimed at transforming into a center for leadership through an um, administrative development. Her statement was made during a discussion session titled Foundation of Lawmaking, Legislation and Policy Setting Government Work presented to the participants of the 31st batch of the leadership program offered by the Bahrain Institute of Public Administration for Public Sector Managers as part of the National Programme for Developing Government Leadership. Dr. Shikha Rana added that the National Programme for Developing Government Leadership is one of the Institute's most prominent programmes designed with a variety of learning methods, including exposure to the experiences and expertise of national leaders. For his part, the Information and E-Government Authority Acting Chief Executive and Deputy CEO of Electronic Transformation, Dr. Zakaria Ahmed Al Khaja, emphasized Bahrain's keenness to investing in national cadres, pointing out the competencies of national leaders that contribute to enhancing institutional development. Al Khaja said that such meetings organized by the administration are likely to enhance the exchange of cumulative experiences and administrative practices among members of public sector institutions. Now the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning announced the completion of maintenance work on the residential building that was damaged by fire in a lousy area last May. We have more in this report. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning finished treating the fire damage and conducting repairs on the residential building affected by the fire last May in cooperation with a specialized government team. They ensured the readiness of security and safety measures, allowing residents to return safely. Residents of the building expressed their gratitude to all involved for their joint effort in completing maintenance work, ensuring a safe and easy return to their homes. The ministry used high-quality standards for the renovation of the residential building and ensured all necessary security and safety measures were provided on every floor. During its meeting with the affected residents, the ministry listened to their additional needs and had a specialized team inspect 207 other residential buildings to ensure compliance with security and safety procedures and standards. 
The High Committee for Hajj and Umrah Affairs held an introductory meeting held by the committee with officials and representatives of Bahraini Hajj campaigns. The meeting announced a new mechanism for registering pilgrims for Hajj trips starting next season. An electronic platform will be launched allowing pilgrims to register directly through simplified and integrated procedures. The new mechanism aims to provide a package of services and their prices through a single, el single electronic platform enhancing competitiveness and transparency. This will enable pilgrims to make informed choices based on the availability of service details and advantages. The committee said that the project enhances competitiveness among licensed Hajj campaigns by eliminating quota distribution, preventing mergers and enforcing minimum management standards. They said that registration priority will be given to Bahrainis, particularly first time Hajj performers to ensure more national pilgrims can benefit from the quota allocated to Bahrain. Within the framework of cooperation between government agencies to combat illegal practices, the Citizenship, Passports and Residence Affairs continue their joint inspection campaigns in cooperation with the Labour Market Regulatory Authority and the four governorates by conducting inspection campaigns and visiting commercial establishments, workplaces and labour gathering places to verify compliance with systems, laws and regulations related to residents. All these joint efforts aim to combat illegal practices in the labour market and irregular employment to protect the community and ensure the awareness of the expatriate workforce about their rights and duties regarding the systems and laws in Bahrain. In addition to activating the legal control aspect through intensifying inspection campaigns on irregular workers. And in conjunction with International Youth Day, the Bahraini Youth Empowerment Laboratory Programme in Youth City 2030 organized a simulation of a model of the UN sessions during which the participants discussed the water scarcity crisis in the world in light of the current climate changes. We have more in this report. Specialized lessons addressed essential messages presented by the Bahraini Youth Empowerment Laboratory Program in Youth City 2030, through which the trainers focused on developing leadership and legal skills, in addition to diplomacy among Bahraini youth, as the idea of the program is based on presenting a simulation model of the United Nations sessions on the stage of Youth City 2030. In this uh, council, I have learned how to negotiate and how to express myself and my views about the, like, my, the societal problems as well as the diplomatic problems. I have also learned about the problems that happen in the entire world and what problems are important at the moment. For example, the water scarcity, which is between Ethiopia and Egypt, I have learned a lot about it and what are the key points in this, in this issue. In this model, the participants discuss the issue of the water scarcity crisis in the world in light of the current climate changes. Participants were trained throughout the program on the necessary skills that could help them in the simulation session, including negotiation, formal speaking and speech analysis. From my experience in this program, uh, I learned a lot of uh, uh, valuable strength uh, skills. For example, I learned uh, leadership skills, communication skills, uh, and many other uh, skills. For example, uh, today we uh, presented uh, the uh, United Nations, um, uh, the Council. So I learned how to uh, learn about the culture of uh, other countries uh, uh, in the world. 
At the conclusion of the program, young people who won the simulation session were honored, especially since the participants transported the audience to the atmosphere of the United Nations through various discussion sessions.